have some stars, you can do it with speed. If I'm clearing the glass, the traffic will burn yellow and the car will move. So what do you do? The person can stand us here. Tomorrow I shouldn't clean it for he says some motorists threaten them with the police, and so constantly they run at the sight of any uniformed policeman. He has saved some money, he reveals, and helps his brother out when need be, but would not want his grandmother to know he has money. We yeah, I put my at right now, half money at home. But I, want to, I, I use the money to play game. No, I give my brother some, my grandmother. Thank you. You don't give. Hey. She asked me where, where, where I get the money. And this taxi driver is worried that these boys sometimes sleep on the pavement and wishes there could be a way out for them. You may not approve of what they do on the streets to get their daily bread, but for them, making a living is their priority. At least if I tell you that, make a do am no. You know go let I do am so I will come by force giddy giddy. So that I go do if I do that I beg you, you know be stealing. Yes, I must start start stealing. Uh, if you give me, I thank God. If you don't give me, you know me by force, take go. So me how they take giddy giddy and they can't do all by force. JJ Rolly self in the past self. I will do all. No, what I mean is would you do it for trot trots? Would you feel for tax? Trot trot like this, we are not do trot trot. I mean like this. I know I'm a big boy. So I do big, big cars. Honorables, you know, generals, very you no. Know. At least these boys are human resources that come in handy. Just see how this boy held the mic and attentively listens to the interview. Well, so that's our story about the windscreen washing boys uh, at Opebia Junction, uh, Opebia House area here in Accra. That's on the 37 road. And well, I've been joined in the studio now by Assistant Superintendent of Police, ASP Alexander Kwekwobing. He's the head of Education and Research Unit of the um, Motor Traffic and Transport Unit of uh, uh, the Police Service in Accra. And I'm now DSP weather. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. So <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> thank then. you. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us. Now, uh, first of all, let me find out from you what you make of the activities of these uh, windscreen washing boys. I think uh, it's an indictment on the states. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, so. it's a scar on our conscience because uh, we are not supposed to first expose these minors to these dangers, mm -hmm. particularly on these police duty points, mm -hmm. which happen to be major arterial roads, but we're in the great Accra region. And a ceremonial room and, as such. Um, yes, and we are talking about a liberation room from mm -hmm. Tetis Aquafo round about to uh, Tetakwashi. Mm -hmm. It's a, a three lane one way, uh, uh, though not supposed to be a fast free lane, mm -hmm. but uh, it receives a lot of uh, vehicular movement on a daily basis. And, exactly. Uh, so far as our rules of engagement is concerned, we know that. We're not supposed to allow uh, persons uh, to jaywalk. Mm -hmm. uh, it is prohibited. Mm. Uh, we're not supposed to uh, uh, encourage people to treat their skills on the road uh, because it exposes them to danger mm -hmm. of uh, marauding vehicles. Mm. And uh, so far as we know, the Children's Act also uh, prohibits uh, the encouragement of these uh, minors to get involved in this. So, I know him very well the sort of uh, traffic outcomes with regard to preventable crashes mm -hmm. involving pedestrians on these routes, including uh, some of these uh, uh, children yeah. and relatives of ours who are exposing themselves and we uh, at the same time encouraging it because you saw that uh, Ghanaians who are drivers, mm -hmm. who are supposed to be adults, mm -hmm. and having 
uh, being tested and giving licenses mm -hmm. are rather encouraging these uh, uh, Ghanaians to, as it were, uh, watch vehicles on our roads but, but one for thing them to be giving some pita. I think that. But one thing also, uh, DSP, is that sometimes you don't decide to allow them. They just come at their own. Once they see that the car is stationary, uh, once that car is not moving, and the traffic is holding at least for some time, they just take their wipers and then just straight. I think the encouragement is not about uh, their presence necessarily. It has to do with what do they get after doing it with coercion and force, for example. Okay. That the adult driver who has complete control of the vehicle uh, is not supposed to encourage uh, uh, giving them monies and all that. It, it also tells us as a state what we, the problems that we are confronted with. Mm. Because streetism is a challenge to most uh, developing and middle income countries mm -hmm. either in sub Sahara or across the globe and s this is something that is emerging in the metropolitan Accra mm. and we must deal with it either at an institutional level or, or physically and situationally uh, trigger the bylaws and also the rule laws, but you also have to think about sometimes the issue of the human factor, human mm -hmm. feeling, mm -hmm. and that comes along. Yeah, which is probably why they're still there. Whereas enforcement normally uh, is back and forth. So these are some of the challenges, but I think it also goes, I've said that it goes beyond it. It also has to do with social uh, mm -hmm. challenges that we are faced with, either at family level, mm -hmm. at the school level. Uh, and the community and the economy as a whole among others. So we, whilst we are looking at the situational way to resolve it, we have to also extend the, our eyes so that we will nip it in the bud. Okay. Mm -hmm. you, you spoke about uh, probably a, a necess the necessity or the need to look at the bylaws and the road laws again. Do their actions contravene any of these laws? Yeah, basically I, I talked about, uh, because uh, if you jaywalk, Mm -hmm. It's contrary to Regulation 154 of the, the law I'm holding. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are there, they are also categorized as three days. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also contrary to Regulation 117. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the uh, Metropolitan Municipal and Digital Assembly bylaws, uh, some of these things are prohibited. Walking mm -hmm. and doing all manner of things, trading on the road and doing all manner of things. So, so far as I'm concerned, uh, it's something that we need to deal with. Uh, it is emerging, and as soon as we collaborate with the MM, uh, Metropolitan Municipal Assemblies to deal with it, uh, the better. But at the same time, we must also sensitize. And that's why I started by saying that the adult driver mm -hmm. who is 18 years and above, yeah. holding license B and above up to F, mm -hmm. should know naturally that such activities are not to be encouraged. Mm. And therefore, if you prevent by refusing to give a reward mm -hmm. when these things are, uh, services are delivered uh, under compulsion, because they said they do it without you know, demanding mm -hmm. it, they, they over time they refrain. And at the same time, <coughs> we expect that the police and other relevant recognized enforcement agencies will also put up deterrent Mm -hmm. measures to uh, stop these uh, uh, menace because mm -hmm. it's not helping us. It rather exposes them to danger because they become victims as uh, pedestrians who so normally get crashed and all that. So in their case, would, you, would, you, would they fall under jaywalkers or would they fall under traders? Both. I'm saying they're both. They are both. Yes. And I'm saying the thing is that the law is as, as expects that we, the people or road users are channeled. Mm. That either you're using the pedestrian walkway that mm -hmm. abuts the road or pelican or zebra crossing when you are a vulnerable mm -hmm. roadist. Mm -hmm. And that when you are a motorist, you, 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 you are using the, the marked area mm -hmm. to move the vehicle. Yeah. Basically, that's so any other person, road user, found walking anywhere 
on the road, either trading or wanting to wash vehicles and all that. You are a jaywalker and mm. uh, you are, you are termed as road criminal okay. and, and, and all that. And uh, of course, we also know that the law also prohibits the uh, trading on the road uh, elsewhere. So put together, it is a prohibited behavior mm. and we expect that and it is not done by one entity. Whilst they are willing to infract, mm -hmm. others are also willing to encourage. Mm -hmm. Those who are willing to encourage are those who give money when they deliver this uh, compulsive, uh, what do you call service. service. And I thought that uh, adults, majority of those who are involved are minors. They are mm -hmm. under age, under 18 years. Yeah. They have not yet attained the age of majority, and therefore, they depend on the adult driver who is a defensive in nature, who knows the consequences of uh, uh, presence of uh, vulnerable road users on in the roadway, and therefore are not supposed to part with returns that they give uh, to them, so that over time, uh, whilst we uh, intensify enforcement, uh, it will add up to discourage uh, this kind of emerging behavior, which is not uh, the best. Mm. You, you spoke about the need for sensitization, but quite apart from that, how else do we deal with this particular issue? Seeing as you said, it's an emerging uh, situation. On our I think uh, sociologists and other social uh, what you call commentators have over the over time uh, discussed the issue of social crime prevention, mm. including enhancing the capacity of the individual. Individual, the very day is born at the family level, even uh, at the community level, including the schools that are available, churches, and then even uh, through the media, as we are here, and, and, and through other uh, technical entities that will equip the individual to become functional, to, to also be part of the, the workforce, to, to, to get employment and all that. So that uh, we, 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 when you're looking at it, you look at the uh, economic aspect of it, the internal aggregate, employment capacity of the state, mm -hmm and all that, and the ability for individuals to educate their family members so that they become uh, a responsible, uh, well, uh, what do you call, equipped uh, citizens who, who have skill mm -hmm. to deliver repeatedly over to, uh, or as it were, uh, assist the country to develop in all its facets. So, uh, socially, we, we need as a state to also look at it, not because the more you do it, the more they do it, isn't it? Because they may tell you they have broken homes. Mm. They may tell you because uh, they, 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 they are absentee uh, fathers mm -hmm. and mothers, and, and they will tell you they are orphans, and, and they will tell you, give you all sort of uh, excuses or, or, or their background. Mm. And that is where the solution lies, that the state will also develop certain mechanisms to, as it were, characterize these uh, incidents uh, so that, in the end, the issue of streetism mm -hmm. and having uh, minors coming on the streets to either trade in dog chains, to either watch green screens of vehicles, among other varying activities, will, 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 will as it were, abate or uh, get ameliorated. Mm -hmm. uh, because we also know that it is this same way that also breeds uh, criminals so over time. Mm. So in, in, in attempting to eliminate this, either through road law enforcement approach or using social crime prevention through the schools, building their capacity and all that. But some of them are not even in school. They spend their whole day on the streets. In that, 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 that's what you're talking about. So that when it is about schooling, mm. there are regulations and laws with regard to uh, what needs to be done, either by parents mm. and either by even the, the society as a whole. Okay. That what is it that they are going through mm. that makes them uh, expose themselves to this danger and trade? What is the motivation? There is a push and pull. We have to look at it. I mean, I may not be expert in all this, but I know through my learning that these are uh, why these. Uh, uh, the children of ours, okay. Ghanaians, mm. get exposed to these uh, areas. And uh, the earlier we look at it, there are a lot of writings and uh, practical, uh, what do you call, implementable uh, documents that we can mm. use. I think we know 
what we have to do and mm. uh, we, all of us must be up and doing okay uh, we have run out of time but finally would uh, i take a final words but i also want you to, to answer this would arresting them be of any help to end in the situation it it, it, it will but uh, for us police is not we will go ahead we will arrest but uh, we will also believe that uh, number of arrests is not always the success that police want to chop. That mm -hmm. the absence of this. Okay, so uh, that's why we are so you propose also the whole, the holistic the whole We need it because it's a social menace mm -hmm. and you don't look at one area. We need to all gamut of approaches to solve it. And okay. one is uh, what you call enforcement. And we will, we will do what we have to do. But I believe that we have to get to the remote cause, mm -hmm. which has to do with maybe the family, mm -hmm. which has to do with maybe the community, mm -hmm. which has to do with maybe the absentee mother and father. Knowing that we are beginning to also see in Ghana a lot of uh, uh, women being uh, family heads with their, mm -hmm. with their fathers mm -hmm. have, uh, Absent. who have absented themselves, yeah. either uh, because they are irresponsible or not. And you have to look at it and, okay. and solve this problem. Mm -hmm. And also build the capacity of our schools to mm -hmm. uh, have, uh, retain some of these young ones of us to build their capacity so that they join us to mm. assist Ghana to develop faster. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, now, DSP, I, I get it correct Thank now. You. <laughs> Deputy Superintendent of Police, Alexander Kwekobing. He's the Head of Education and Research Unit of the Motor Traffic and Transport Unit of the Ghana Police Service. And he's been helping us look at the issue of uh, these often underage boys who are... Um, endangering their lives by thinking that they're aching out a living by washing windscreens of cars on the streets. Uh, we'll get, to, of course, we'll still look at this issue. He's proposing a holistic approach to it. And of course, we'll get some more insights with other stakeholders who are involved to see how best we can address this particular issue. But moving on, uh, most patients who attended the outpatient department of the Central Regional Hospital today were turned away because no doctor was available to attend to them. Patients who attended the outpatient department of the Central Regional Hospital today were turned away because no doctors were available to attend to them. When joining his visit at the hospital this morning, there were few people at the OPD compared to other days. Patients at the emergency department also told Joy News that no doctor has been at post since morning and that they were still waiting to see if they will be attended to. Meanwhile, information Joy News gathered indicates that some Cuban doctors were at post attending to patients. Georgina Pierce report from the Central Region. Meanwhile, in the Ashanti region, doctors at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital have complied with the directive from the Ghana Medical Association not to admit any emergency case starting today. Patients who visited the hospital were turned away. Others who hung around say they have not seen doctors since morning. Mohamed Nuruddin has this report. Nurses who spoke to Joy News confirmed the compliance and said Doctors are not ready to attend to patients. Information gathered at the accident and emergency unit of the hospital indicate ambulance services were communicated to not to bring emergency cases because doctors have withdrawn services. It says, until government addresses the doctor's grievances, the situation would continue. The news team only saw one patient who was sent into the accident and emergency unit, but as to whether he would be attended to, it remains unknown. Most patients have no option than to leave, because there was no indication they would be attended to. Others, however, hanged around praying for a divine intervention. They spoke to Joy News. Mohamed Nuruddin's report from the Ashanti region for Joy News. <laughs>
Well, we're still trying to get some uh, more updates for you on this uh, particular strike by the doctors across the country. We're trying to gauge the situation. So we'll be getting on the phone line shortly to speak to um, our reporters from across the country to get an update on this particular situation. But before we do that, the new minimum wage for 2013 is expected to be announced uh, by the National Tripartite Committee uh, today. The NTC comprising representatives of the government, the Trade Union Congress, and the Employers Association of Ghana were expected to announce the new wage last week. This was because the committee did not agree on the new figure last Friday. The Minister of Employment and Labor Relations, Ni Ama Ashite, who also chairs the NTC, had said the new daily minimum wage will take effect from Friday, April 19, 2013. The stakeholders expect a 35% increase over the current minimum wage of four cities, 48 pesos. Away from that, the Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament has arrived in Ghana for a meeting of members of Parliament of ECOWAS. The one-week meeting includes meeting with a technical team to discuss ways of transforming the ECOWAS Parliament from the advisory role it plays to a legislative body that will make laws for the sub-region. As host for the one-week deliberations due to its democratic credentials in the sub-region and the continent as a whole. The initiative, which began in 2010 according to the Speaker of the ECOWAS Parliament, E.K. Ikweramadu, has stalled due to lack of funds and logistics. What we want to do is to give our people an opportunity to be elected into the Parliament on a full-time basis so that they will not have any other alliance or allegiance you know, in terms of the parliament, another parliament. So there will be uh, parliamentarians for ECOWAS parliament different from any other uh, parliament. So, so they're not going to be the parliamentarians in, a, in their own respective countries. But because of the logistics involved, we are looking at a possibility of using the national parliament as electoral college where this parliament, parliamentary, uh, the new parliamentarians for ECOWAS will be elected. But if you're already a member of uh, any of the parliaments, then you have to resign. He also spoke on how the new parliament, when approved, will be constituted. The idea was that uh, before the present legislature, which started in 2011, there will be direct election. Studies were con conducted. Unfortunately, because, as I said, because of logistic reasons, we were unable to do that. So right now, the idea then was to have parliamentary elected from the grassroots on a general election. So since we couldn't attend, attend that, so we're now coming up with an option where there will be an indirect election where the members of the parliament will be the electoral college. Almost all the members of the ECOWAS parliament from other countries are already in the country for the meeting. The group will also pay a curtsy call on Ghana's Speaker of Parliament and the President today. Well, that was the ECOWAS story, but let's go back uh, to touch base with uh, one of our reporters, Patricia Osei, who is following up on the strike by the doctors. Uh, she's visited some health institutions across the capital, and she joins me with an update. Hello, good afternoon to you, Pat. Hello, good afternoon, Smart. Okay, so uh, I understand you've been to the 37 military hospital and the police hospital. Tell us, what's yes. the situation like over there? Okay, and the normal circumstances there should be there should be pressure on those two hospitals because for them they don't go on strike or they haven't been on strike and they are accepting emergency cases as well. But it looks like the situation is is calm. They have put in place some measures to control the situation. And for for the police hospital, for instance, they have mobile clinics. They have two mobile clinics, which, are, which has um, 10, 10 bed capacity. One has 10 bed capacity, so we know about 20 beds to cater for more, more patients that will be coming to the hospital. And they have um, they are all medical personnel and non-medical personnel who are on leave, and those who were even supposed to go on leave didn't. They are still working. So that everything will be will be in place. So the situation is not that bad at, at these two hospitals. Mm. At the okay. six, seven hospitals too, it's, it's basically the same. They are coping. They are managing. Mm. And how about the patients? Do they keep flocking in because they know at least these two institutions, their doctors are still there, or the the numbers at the OPD are not really that much? 
for today, the, the numbers haven't really increased. But over the um, past two weeks, um, I, what we gathered at the police hospital was that the number has increased. But as of today, it, so it's, let's say it's normal for them now. They haven't had any special cases, no, as of the time we got there. But they are expecting more people and more emergency cases tomorrow. Because according to them, the, um, the exercise started today. So they, they feel tomorrow most people will not go to the other hospitals. So that when you ask them to come to police hospital, they will decline. They will just go there straight away. So they will be having more people. They are expecting more people tomorrow. Okay, and Pat, before I let you go, uh, for at Confanoche, for instance, we understand that uh, the ambulance service has been informed not to bring any emergency cases there because even if they do, the doctors will not attend to the patients. Uh, how uh, do you see or have you seen any ambulance or ambulances so far coming to 37 or probably the police hospital with uh, some emergency cases? Yes, when we go to at Southern Military Hospital, there was an ambulance which was actually leaving anyway. It, it was from Matsumoto Hospital. So we obviously they were they were coming from other hospitals to that place. But we didn't really see many of them. But according to the PR of the Ghana Police Service, they were allowing other hospitals, other emergency cases from other hospitals in there. So for them they are not turning away people. Mm. Okay, uh, many thanks, Patricia. So we'll leave it there for now. Uh, thank you very much for that update. Let me speak with uh, our reporter, Patricia Ose, who is on the beat in Accra, visiting some of the health institutions. She's been to 37 and um, um, the police hospital, where she says, of course, they are, it, they are managing the situation quite well. Um, still with the doctor's strike, a human rights lawyer, Tunis Edward Amuzu, has filed a writ at an Accra High Court seeking a declaration that the strike embarked upon by the Ghana Medical Association be declared illegal. The plaintiff, Tunis Edward Amuzu, is also seeking an order from the court directed at the GMA to call off its strike and a perpetual injunction to restrain doctors from ever embarking on a strike or a partial withdrawal of services. The writ, dated April 18, 2013, was issued on behalf of the plaintiff by Aine and Feli law officers in Accra. In a statement of claim, the plaintiff said, one of the philosophies of the GMA was that health is a right and must be made accessible, equitable, affordable, appropriate and safe at all times to all the people in Ghana. On April 8, 2013, the GMA publicly announced its decision to embark on a strike involving the partial withdrawal of medical services in public health facilities in the country. Prior to that decision, the GMA had engaged at different levels of interaction with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning, and the National Labor Commission to deliberate on its concerns regarding arrangements for the payment of the market premium of its members. The stakeholders failed to reach an agreement despite several meetings held. According to the statement, the GMA, together with all of its members working in the public sector, had a duty to obey the laws of Ghana, adding that the action of the association and or some of its members in embarking on a strike was an affront to the rule of law. The plaintiff further contends that as essential service providers, members of the defendant association cannot lawfully withdraw any part of their services in total disregard of the labor laws of the land and in particular section 163 of the Labor Act 2003, that is Act 651. This unlawful restriction or curtailment of access to health services constitutes a serious threat to the health of many Ghanaians, including the applicant. Therefore, the respondent's strike violates the right of the applicant to access health services in public health institutions, the statement said. You're still watching the Midday Brief here on Joy News. We take a quick break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.
away from health, education has become the key to a better life. It has also become a matter of human rights. Whilst government works towards improving the quality of education, many districts across the nation struggle to improve upon quality. Here's a report by our Volta Regional Correspondent, Jerry Komla Ado, on the poor standards of education in the whole West District of the Volta Region. There are still some schools with inadequate teachers, no classrooms, libraries and staff common rooms. The situation hampers delivery of quality education in many districts. One of such districts is the newly created whole West District of the Volta region. The whole West District is faced with crisis leading to appalling educational standards. The performance of basic students in this district has been very poor. According to the Ghana Education Service, out of 1,001 candidates presented for the 2012 Basic Education Certificate Examination, 69.59% failed. Ten basic schools in the district also scored 0%. Responding to this in an interview with Joy News, the district chief executive of the area, Sami Ewade, admitted that education standards are appalling. He said the situation is due to lack of needed educational infrastructure. According to him, apart from lack of proper school facilities, teacher-people ratio is also an issue. He says lack of teacher supervision also affects students' performance. Jerry Comlado's report from the Volta region. Now to the courts. Lawyers of President John Mahama have... Um, Bigger pardon, officials, uh, lawyers of President John Mahama would have to adopt a new method of cross-examining uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia on the witness stand today. The Supreme Court today resumed hearing of the election petition case in which three leading members of the NPP are challenging the verdict of the 2012 general election. Uh, meanwhile, Dr. Uh, Presiding Judge uh, William Atuguba has uh, outlined guidelines to help expedite the hearing. The circular signed by Justice William Atuguba outlined guidelines to help expedite the hearing of the election petition challenging the results of the 2012 general polls. Part of the directive reads as follows. Counsel for the first respondents do list out the residue of the pink sheets in the manner here to be identified by him in his cross-examination of the second petitioner, which he claims were duplicated in their mode and manner of generation, extent of their use by the petitioners for purpose of proof of their petition. The said list should be electronically served forthwith by counsel for the first respondent on all other parties. As they resume sitting today, Monday, 22nd April, counsel for the first respondent may put the said list by way of further cross-examination to the second petitioner for his response. The said list can then be tendered into evidence. Counsel for the first respondent or any other party may bring along with him all their copies of the pink sheets. However, lawyers for the National Democratic Congress have indicated their strong objection to the new rules. A member of the party's legal team, Abraham Amaleba, has described the Supreme Court's decision as an administrative fiat. He disagreed that the method chosen by the counsel for the first respondent, Tony Letha, in his cross-examination would delay the processes. The general secretaries of both parties have also been instructed by the court to refrain from making remarks about the case that might be construed as sub judice. We'll do some wellness in a bit. Stay with us. Now to wellness, and we're talking about heart attack. And do you know that people who consume saturated fat and cholesterol are at a higher risk of exposing themselves to health threats? Well, if you didn't know now, you know. Over a million people each year are said to have a heart attack, and 25% of them die before they get to the hospital or while in the emergency department. Health experts advise prompt attention to signs of heart attack. And we have those information and for you. Before it happens, actually gives you time so that you know that it is going to happen. Uh, most of the times, it starts by chest pain. That actually is central, you see it. 
on the left side that will hold your shoulder, the left part of the neck, coughing and vomiting. Some people will present with heart attack just because they have vomiting. Some will get pain in what we call epigastrum. Uh, at times, this heart bends because some pains are similar to the pain of heart. We eat a lot of fatty food, uh, food that is more of carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. So we are in the extreme. Carbohydrate with fatty. For instance, the granola soup is nice and is very tasty, but it's very oily and it contains a lot of cholesterol. The pabno soup is nice, I enjoy it, but it contains a lot of cholesterol. You know, when you're going to buy oil, you see that the red oil has a top that is very light. That one is the good one, and I wish everybody would eat that one. But the one that is condensed and thick, that one contains a lot of cholesterol. And that's what we enjoy. We like that one more than any other thing. So it tells you what we actually consume contains a lot of cholesterol. But adults are said to be at high rate of surviving this condition. The young person get a heart attack and most likely they may die of it because the body has not developed what we call collateral, other vessels to supply blood when the main pipeline is blocked. The old person, most of the time as we are aging, we start developing tiny vessels to keep us in case the main source of blood supply to the heart blocks. So a young person getting a heart attack and an old person get a heart attack, they are different. So you see a young person get a heart attack and most likely, most of them, they die. These are the ones we accuse the old woman in the house and things like, oh, he was fine, he has no problem, but he died because he possibly this guy is stressed, possibly he's hypertensive and he doesn't know. He doesn't, once you get it, it's the time to seek doctor advice who tell how many of the tissue or the cells are going to die. Okay, because you are not giving blood to the muscle, the heart muscle, and it has to be contracting all the time. They need the energy. So they start dying as time goes on. So if you can present to the hospital with your chest pain in the first six hours, you stand a chance of regaining all this. Well, I hope that information does come handy for you, especially seeing as the doctors are on strike and not even attending to emergency cases. So take that and use it very well. But... Let's take a flight to the sporting world on the wings of Tigo. Now, in sports, a training course for coaches of coast clubs in Ghana takes place today, Monday, April, 20, April 22, 2013. More information in the sports brief. Let's do some quick international business news before we leave. Uh, Boeing has started replacing batteries on some of its grounded 787 Dreamliner fleet, moving a step closer to getting the planes flying again. And uh, that's it for the bulletin. But before we go, the election petition hearing is ongoing at the Supreme Court. They've taken a break. They will be back anytime soon and we'll rejoin them for the full broadcast of that. Uh, a review is underway for, the new, for a new minimum wage and we're expecting that announcement later today. We'll bring you an update on that as and when we do get it. Doctors have moved to phase two of their uh, nationwide strike, withdrawing emergency services. And of course, we brought you a story about the windscreen washing boys and we spoke to DSP Alexander Obing of the MTTU. He's in charge of education and research there and he proposes a holistic approach towards dealing with that situation. My name is Nia Kofi Smatabi. Many thanks for your time with us. Stay with us here on Journeys because we have um, the Supreme Court hearing coming up. And of course, we have our regular programming continuing when they're done.